Give an injury report. Um, Stewart, Archie, and Cree. But Archie made progress today. I was out on the pitch, so he's getting close. And and Cree is um, probably on the pitch next week as well. So uh, good news. Uh, uh, Georgie's looked good in training. Uh, I think he'll be in the squad. We have a you know now we have a little bit of a number situation, so we've got to see where we're at with different things. But I think he'll be ready. Um, so yeah, we're we're inching towards being at full capacity. Hi, Jesse. Um, two strong performances in the last week, but how important was it to get that win in midweek after a sequence without one, and how much does that give you now a springboard potentially to kick on in the next few weeks? Yeah, I think uh, after the Villa match, the, the lads knew they played well, but it, it, you could see it hurt them to not get anything out of it. Um, so we needed, we needed a result. Right, we won the tournament, obviously, but but also to to keep pushing this thing, and keep the belief high. That being said, um, it doesn't guarantee anything. I, I think Brentford is on is in a really good way. Um, they're very clear on who they want to be, and you know today was a day where we focused almost entirely on uh, set plays. So we know that'll be massively important on Sunday. You go to a junior in the squad. He's told us that he's not quite hundred percent. What have you made of him in training? What kind of impact has he had on you <coughs> this week? And is he the, the kind of player who can come in and, and make that instant impact in the Premier League or will he need a bit a bit of time to settle? I think he he will it will naturally take him a little bit of time, but just like with Max Vuber, I said, you know, it's not like this is waiting forever for him to acclimate. We need to, to get him integrated quickly so that he can help us as quickly as possible. And the, the best part is I think he's intelligent. I think he understands a lot of the concepts. Uh, I said that before. And I think he'll, he'll be ready to, to contribute um, on Sunday. So we'll see how the match goes, but that will be in our minds. But Bamford, Rodrigo and Nonto all scored in midweek, so suddenly have you got the kind of selection headache in attack that all managers want? Yeah, absolutely. We, we've, I'm thankful for our ownership that, that we've invested so heavily in trying to continue to improve our team. Uh, I like to use the word weapons when I desc describe players. I, I like players who have weapons. And now we have an arsenal of attacking players who have real weapons, who are... are are fast, are, are clever, are, have talent, uh, have technical ability and, and intelligence. So if we can start to blend that all together and, and create, continue to be clear on our playing model, then we can use these weapons to, to help us, help benefit the group and score goals and, and be effective. Thank you. Hi, hey, Jesse. Um, just something on the team who's Matt Vuba and Adam Forshaw, will they both be? Oh, sorry, I didn't mention Adam. Adam will not be in. Uh, that's another one. Uh, but Max will be ready. He trained today. And on the back four, Jesse, you've made a complete change for the midweek game. Yeah. Um, how comfortable are you now that you're getting close in your mind as to what your best back four is or defensive system? Yeah, well, the, the nice, obviously, the, the, the two goals late put a little bit of a damper. Everybody was, a, you know, we stayed positive and we are positive about the performance, but obviously we were disappointed to, to give away a couple late goals. Um, but one of the nice things is that we've rotated players and we've seen similar understanding of the tactics and, and similar performances. So that's a good sign. And, and again, I think that's been my goal is to continue to push this thing so that there's real clarity tactically as to what, what, what we're trying to achieve. And I've, I feel like we're, we're now tilting the needle to, to being more of that. And Jesse, you were clearly upset about a report that suggested that players in, yeah, were sort of against you, some senior players were against you, and you said it's not true. You were angry. What about the players? What they said to you about that? Were they angry as well? Yeah, the, they came to me. You know, and, and I think also they don't, they want to make sure that, that I know and that everyone knows that, that they're, that we're together. So I said that, I said they were angry. Um, and you know, there, this, I can be criticized for a lot of things, right? And it's not like if you just went on results, then, and that's what the discussion has been is, is that the results haven't been good enough and that's enough fodder. I don't think anyone needs to try to invent anything else because the, the, 
the quality of people that we have on the inside of this club is like nothing I've ever experienced. And so that's a, that's a, when someone starts, you can, you can knock us for not getting the results that we want and not playing at the level that we, what our expectations are of ourselves. And we have to be able to handle that and respond to that. But to, to question the character of, of what we've created here and what we're about, that's totally off base. And I, and I, and I wanted to make sure that I cut that out immediately. People that you've got here, we've just spoken to one now in Georgina Ruta, I mean, a, a, a great young man to speak to, but talented as well, clearly. Um, does that why now you're allowing people like Max Dean to go to MK Dons rather than maybe on the loan because you've got a bit too many of them? It's been a little bit of a delicate balance in trying to maintain enough young players to continue to feed from within of what we're trying to achieve with both the 21s and with our group. Um, as a club, when we've invested in a lot of outside young talent, outside the league, and, and I think high potential talent, then we always have to evaluate what does that mean for, for some of the younger players and how do the, how do the pieces all fit together. Uh, we, it's not like we wanted to lose Max Dean, um, but obviously given the opportunity that he could have, um, we all were excited to try to help Jacko as well. So we have to think selfishly, but obviously Jacko feels like he's someone who's inside the family. So it, it, it made sense from all angles, I think, to, to um, move, move Max to MK Dons. And with Brentford, do you use that German expression, selfish, down this guy? Really Good job. Care. Good job, <laughs> Adam. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Showing <laughs> off. Well, yeah. yeah. Comfortable with themselves is how you describe them. Yeah. And I don't know if it's something that you've picked up in Germany with other clubs that have you, but what is it that Thomas Frank has been able to do to get to that stage? And where <clears throat> are you on that journey as well? It takes time. Uh, he started the journey in the championship. And in some ways... You know, I, I, I said I was critical of myself that the process hasn't been as accelerated as I would have liked. And even, I, I don't know, you know, when we were, when I, when I was in the process of evaluating coming here to begin with, obviously we all wanted to stay in the Premier League for, for many reasons. But I could have also created a narrative that going to the championship would have given us more time to really put the process in place and to build in uh, the, the playing style. And even when I look at Burnley, for example, and what Vincent Company has been able to accomplish there, I think how he's been able to, to put that in place and, it's, and, and have success along the way, which feeds more belief and confidence into the group, and success always helps in, in accelerating a learning curve. What we have here is that we're, the challenges are always so massive, but it takes time. And I think now over time that we're as coming clear that success will come easier, as easy as it is in this league. And I hope that that will continue to feed belief. But I know this is what I've tried to say in the last two weeks is now I'm at a, at a position with our group where I know I know that they are clear and they believe more and they're confident and they're ready for bigger challenges. Yep. Can I just check on Liam Cooper? I think he was a doubt. Yeah, he, he should be ready to go as well. Um, players and coaches look for an edge anywhere they can find it. Did, did you mention last season and, and staying up at Brentford in, in your preparation for this? No, we talked, we showed today a few things, and we actually showed from our last match at Brentford. Um, and, and some of the things that we did well, some things that we didn't do well. And, and to, to help the players really wrap their minds around what are the strategies. Because I think it, this is always key when you play different teams is there's, there's tactics and playing styles, but there are ultimately strategies. And, and what exactly does Brentford want the game to look like and what exactly do we want the game to look like? You're not talking about transfers this month, um, which feels slightly at odds with your kind of open nature generally. What's the thinking behind that, and have you seen a benefit to it this month? Well, I, the two things, I, I, again, I've talked about the obsession with the transfer market, um, and I think it takes away from uh, the focus on the team. And so that has been, I, I've, I think it's made it easier for Andrea and Victor and Angus to manage the market uh, without me talking about it every press conference. And I think it also keeps my focus and our team's focus 
uh, squarely on exactly the task at hand with what's important for our team from match to match. So that's been the strategy behind that. You've used a, a front two in the past. Um, Nardi got Georgina through the door. Yeah. Is that something we could see if it was form and fit? Absolutely. And I think the, the way we play now, you know, I, I tend to think that players need to have flexibility. And, and in that, we can use tactics and, and we can call a system one thing, but it can often work in a little bit different way. And then we can figure out how to maximize the potential and, and qualities of each player. Um, so I think that, that we could, like, let's just now say at striker, I could imagine us starting matches with all Patrick, Rodri, and Jorginho. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think we'll have, uh, we'll continue to build flexibility into, into how we play with these guys. I just, can you have some more detail on Adam's situation? Obviously, he had that initial surgery, which you described as mm -hmm. a minor surgery, and back training pretty quickly. It's now getting on to maybe two weeks since the surgery, the day of the West Ham game, I think it was. That wasn't a surgery. It was more a procedure. Like, he, he had, like, a injection to help, um fortify things uh so and one of the things that even that the doc so he's had a lot of visits to the doctors to, to try to identify uh, exactly what's happening and one of the things that that everyone feels needs to be addressed is just strengthening the area and part of that makes sense because he's been out for a while and so now making sure that we're uh, putting him in a situation where it's not cyclical, that he's just constantly battling just getting back on the pitch. Instead, get him to a strong place where he can perform at his best. Uh, so that's meant that we've taken a little bit of a step back and worked more on some of his strength and infrastructure um, and mobility so that he can have a better chance of, of getting himself to, to top fit. You briefly touched upon the last visit to Brentford earlier in the season. Clearly, it was one of the, the more... Uh, troubling results this season. Uh -huh. What have you learned from looking back at that game? How are you going to stop Ivan's this weekend? Well, what we learned in that match is exactly what we talked about again Is it, uh, for this match is that we played a little bit too much into their hands. And and they, they can make you, they can kind of lull you into sleep uh, to thinking that you're in control of the match. But they are waiting just for the right counter situation. They're waiting just for the right long ball, long throw in, free kick, corner kick, all these situations. And so we have to know that our ability to stay totally alert for the whole match and, and realize that even though we may feel comfortable in possession at times or like we're in, on top of the match, that it only takes a second to let it slip. So I think that, that concentration for 90 minutes will be really important. Thank you. Yep. Jesse, it's often said when young players first come into first team football that they should be dipped in and out. Um, I just wonder, is, is William Onto uh, a special case because he's such a powerful build? Is it more about mentality than, than physique? How do you sort of see it? Yeah, I don't think I subscribe to that same philosophy. I, I think my goal with young players is to help accelerate their learning curve, and I find that once the, it clicks a little bit, where they kind of make the sharp upturn um, in performance, that then they're in a position where they can they can sustain a lot of the things that they've learned. Uh, obviously, trying to manage physically and and now what the game what the matches are like, you know this was one of the things about being on top of the match from the beginning uh, for Cardiff that was so important is then we could give Willie a little bit more rest, Tyler Adams a little bit more rest. Um, we made the change with Rodrigo at half. Uh, and that, that I think, uh, will give those guys a little bit more ability to regenerate and go again at a high level for this one. And, and might we see more of that now, as you say, at the Arsenal being built up? Might we see our games where fans are perhaps disappointed to see a certain player not, not starting, but it's for the, the longer term good? So. I think more importantly is that internally, the guy, that every player understands that whether he's starting or, or coming uh, from the bench, that every minute of any performance is vital and that guys are ready to perform at the highest level and now push at 100% in every match. And then we can really uh, have a mentality to push games more and more and more as we go. So I, I think I, we've, we've had a little bit of that discussion already and I think that all the players are clear on that. Um, of course, every player wants to play every minute, 
but uh, in order to sustain the way we want to play over 90 minutes and over an entire season, I think the ability to use an entire squad is really important. Thank you. What difference do you think it makes to Jorginho that so much money has been spent on him? Because he's a young guy at 20, and I guess just to follow on from that, how much pressure does the amount of money spent put on a coach or a manager to, I guess, get him into the team as soon as possible? I, I think I've said this a few times already. I try, Phil, not to ever think about the money um, at any moment with anything. I think of it as, as trying to maximize the potential of every single person in our organization, in our team. Um, and knowing Georgie, I don't think these things factor into him too much. And it's one of the reasons why we even felt he was the right kind of guy is is the fearlessness and the belief in himself. And the he has a, I wouldn't say jovial, but he has a light way of just enjoying football and, and a desire to learn and grow and get better. And I think those qualities will help him manage the pressures of what it is here in England with the league, with the media, with expectation, everything. So uh, I'm very hopeful uh, getting to know him more and more every day that, that he is going to uh, grow into something special. At the risk of getting into transfers, is Joe Gelhart still in the building? Where is he at? Joe Gelhart is still in the building. He trained today. Hi Jesse, um, we've got a question we're asking all Premier League managers today about concussion subs. Um, don't know if you saw the news this week that the Premier League wanted to introduce temporary concussion subs, but that got rejected. Um, do you think temporary concussion subs should, should be going forward? So, we used one last year, correct? But they're now saying that going forward we're not going to have them? Uh, no, at the moment it's a, like a permanent concussion sub. So, we so ah. bring one on. Oh, then, okay, I understand. But they want to bring a 10 minute rule in so okay. we can properly assess the problem. Understand, understood, understood. Yeah, that, that one's. That one for me probably makes a little bit less sense um, than the permanent sub. This is a big talking point in the U.S., I think you know. Like in, in youth soccer in the U.S., um, there's no heading, I think, until they're 15 years old. And this is probably in the U.S., and maybe it's a little bit of a touchy subject. It's more even like a legal thing with, with U.S. soccer than necessarily um, uh, feeding into what the research says. But nonetheless, I suffered from concussions when I played. Um, and I think I try to really value that with players. And even if you remember last year, Wolves, when we took Clicky off, he had a big welt on his face. And he came to me and said, I'm OK, I can play. I said, you're sitting down. Um, and, and so I think it's really important to respect um, the personal safety of the players. And I, I take it as a responsibility as their manager that I try to never put players in harm's way. Um, so, in, in general, I, I think if a player needs 10 minutes to be assessed for a concussion, that probably he should just come out, right? If, if they're not fairly certain immediately that he's okay, then that's enough of a question mark for me to, to just have the concussion sub available is enough of reinforcement, probably, in the, in the current format. I, I'm, I'm supportive. Thanks. And, yep. and back on Lee's matters, um, how do you keep Willie's feet on the ground after what happened on Friday night? <laughs> That's no problem at all. I mean, Willie wants to train every day. He wants to work for the team every day. He's a special young man. So he's, he's in a good way, certainly. Um, he's such a likable guy, and, and we know that he's really grounded, really grounded. The biggest challenge he has is continuing to keep Cree grounded the same way he is. <laughs> Hi, Jesse. Uh, given the, the recent... Premier League record. Is this one of the biggest games for you, your time at Leeds yet? Yeah. <clears throat> it, it, it was good to get a, a win, but it, for me it didn't change anything. We, uh, we need to continue to push to be the team that we want to become and that we feel that the closer that we play and the longer we play 90 minutes in a match the way we want to play, we feel that we'll be able to get the results that we need to be to get better and better. So uh, that's our focus entirely. Hi, Jesse. Hi. You said the players came to see you. What did that look like and what did it mean to you? Yeah, I mean, they, a few of them came, a couple came together, a couple came separately wasn't like they, they went out of their way to make a huge statement, but 
we're, we, we interact here constantly as if we, we are teammates, right? This is how we work. We, we support each other always. Um, it's a really wonderful place to be. And I'm very thankful for the club, the players, the leadership. It's special here. So it was fairly clear that, that we're together. And so what did that unity mean to you, having been here the best part of the year? I, it didn't, I mean, I, I appreciated them coming to me, but it, I, knew, I knew it was there already. I didn't need, I didn't need affirmation. Um, I knew that when somebody told me, you know what, somebody from Austria told me that it was in the paper in Austria. And that's how I found out. And I was, yeah, I was like, what are they doing reporting in Austria? And then I noticed it was reported in England. And so, uh, and I knew right away. I didn't even need to ask anybody because I know it's not true. Okay, we'll just go on to the Sunday embargo for Jason and Ross if you just do the second so that you can do camera.